Bill Maher thinks that Talib's BDS movement and support is BS. I want to go ahead and play this short clip here of him saying it, and I'll get your take on it. BDS is a purity test by people who want to appear woke but actually slept through history class. <laughs> it's That's true. Thank you. It's, it's predicated on this notion, I think it's, it's very shallow thinking, that the Jews are in Israel mostly white and the Palestinians are browner, so they must be innocent and correct, and the Jews must be wrong. As, as if the occupation came right out of the blue, that this completely peaceful people found themselves occupied. Forget about the infitadas and the suicide bombings the and, and the rockets and how many wars. And uh, let me read Omar Barghouti is one of the co-founders of the movement. His quote, no Palestinian, rational Palestinian, not a sellout Palestinian will ever accept a Jewish state in Palestine. So that's where that comes from this movement, someone who doesn't even want a, Palest a Jewish state at all. Somehow this side never gets presented in the American media. It's very odd. He said it's very odd, Barry, that this type of side of uh, Talib and the people she supports is never presented to the media. What do you say to that? Well, I, I find it interesting that I maybe would agree with five or ten percent about what Bill Maher would say. We're on different ends of the political spectrum. Mm -hmm. This is a guy openly rooting for a recession to start immediately, yeah. so millions of people are out of work, and if they're out of work, they won't vote for Trump. They'll vote for Biden or Elizabeth Warren or Bernie Sanders. So, I, I, you know, on a lot of things, I disagree with him. But here he's right, and and when he talks about the fact that a group of terrorists are shooting missiles into schools and apartment buildings and homes and farms every day. No wonder Israel wants a wall. No wonder Israel wants to keep out anyone that supports it. Look, um, I can give you the app. You can put it on your phone here in the United States that shows you every time a missile is fired in Israel. Those missiles are aimed to cause the maximum amount of terror and kill as many people as possible. Talib feels that those missiles are justified and the killing of innocent civilians is justified because Gaza is occupied. There's so many lies in that statement. It's profound to the point of, geez, I guess we shouldn't even have to answer it because people know better. Like, for example, there hasn't been a single Jew dead or alive in Gaza since 2005. They've all evacuated, dug up the cemeteries and took the Jewish dead with them for fear that the bodies would be desecrated. There's no occupation. That entire territory is run by and for a Palestinian terror organization supported by Rashida Tlaib. So Bill Maher is right, Jermaine, to say she's telling a story that's just not true. Where is the history class that she and everyone else should have gone to? Well, the answer is simple. You can't let the facts get in the way of your argument. Mm -hmm. It's not like a Joe Biden statement from a couple weeks ago. <laughs> in, other words, in other words, don't bother me with your facts. I'm making a point. And if the facts disagree with my point, then I'm just going to scream and call names. That's literally what's going on here. Literally what's going on here. I can't tell you how many people I've met in person and spoke in conversations that actively within Israel are pushing for some kind of deal with Hamas to create a vibrant, energetic economy in Hamas's controlled territory so that the people there don't want to make missiles in the basement, don't want to throw themselves on the fence and get shot, don't want to fire bombs over the fence, kite bombs on fire and burn down all the fields in southern Israel, and are going to stop trying to kill every member of Starot, which is across the street, 
from Gaza. Mm. Hamas won't let that happen. I'll tell you a, a quick sideline story. When I was last in Eshkelon, which is the large city in southern Israel where the power plant is that creates the electricity for the Gaza Strip, that Israel sends into the Gaza Strip, mm -hmm. that Hamas normally doesn't pay for, no kidding, I asked the commanding general for Southern Command, who built all these buildings, these apartments and, you know, the stores and the shopping centers and the office buildings? And he said, Palestinians from Gaza. Before Hamas took over, the border was open every day. And the buses used to line up, drive them to work. They'd work all day. They get paid the same as the Israeli workers. And they would go back to Gaza with a pile of money every single day. It was a huge workforce. They were thrilled to have the jobs, and Israel was thrilled to have them. When Hamas took over, part of their charter is to kill every single man, woman, and child in Israel that's a Jew. Mm -mm -mm. So, obviously, let your citizens go work for them because they're the enemy, so you keep them in. And as a result, it creates tremendous poverty and an economic mess, and they put terror in place of stable economic future for the people, which is why so many people are trying to get out of Gaza to go anywhere in the Middle East to any country that will take them because they have no future. But Rashida Tlaib is a supporter of that government, even though it's a terror organization that every day tries to kill Israelis, every single day. I urge your viewers to get the app on their phone, it's free, that will tell them every time a missile hits. It'll scare the crap out of them. And imagine where they're living, like you in Minnesota, or people in Houston, or Dallas, or New Orleans, or New York, or wherever, that missiles were coming in and hitting your neighborhood, or your kid's school, or your office, or your car as you were driving on the freeway. Everything I just told you happens every week in Israel. 